Hello, everybody. It's Jody Franklin. Um, you can unshare for now, Dr. Lee, and I'll uh, I'll tell you when to share because I just want to introduce you first. But I want you all to meet Dr. Edwin Lee, and I was so lucky to have attended his um, conference at the IHS um, conference in New York City recently. He did a he did a talk on peptide therapy and in, in neuro neuroregenerative peptide therapy. And I learned so much about the possibilities for uh, my clients that I'm working with, with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease and anxiety. There's so much research out there now uh, and so many tools you could use in your practice if they were available in the U.S. to help your patients who are struggling with these things. And the studies are showing that these peptides are just uh, amazing at what they do for helping people to get better and get uh, higher BDNF. He's going to talk all about this. And it's just a really quick presentation he's going to do today. So um, sit back and 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 uh, grab a cup of tea and, and check it out because this is just fascinating, cutting edge science right now. And I think it's really important that we all take a look at this and also try to make this available to our uh people to people in this country. And uh, right now, a lot of this is not available. And Dr. Lee will show you how you can sign a petition to help get these available in the United States as well. But Dr. Edwin Lee is an endocrinologist, author, and international speaker. And he founded the Institute for Hormonal Balance in Orlando, Florida in 2008. He's board certified in internal medicine, endocrinology, diabetes, and metabolism, and has completed special training in regenerative and functional medicine. And he's a graduate of the Medical College of Pennsylvania. He finished his two fellowships at uh, critical care and endocrinology at the University of Pittsburgh, and is the author of many books. And the latest one is The Fountain of Youth with Peptides. And I'm very interested in The Fountain of Youth with Peptides. So I'll be getting a copy of that book too. But Dr. Lee, it's such an honor to have you here today. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jody. So uh, should I hit share screen now? You sure can. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me get going. so this is like a summary of what we learned at the at the conference. So if you weren't lucky enough to attend, you can you can check this out today. Well, it's it's just a little summary. It's not all the slides. Uh, so um, anyway, the I think important message is uh, when Dr. Hyman was asking during the conference about getting peptides, he mentioned about peptide science, and that is like like kind of the biggest pet peeve. Um, you could use your, uh, you can get uh, peptide science and use it on your own, but do not use it with your patients because it's for research purpose only. And just recently, if you look at this, February 14, 2024, the FDA cracks down on online retailers selling unimproved GLP-1 agonists. So uh, we are, uh, FYI, I, I believe that you should get peptides through a 503A um, compounded um pharmacy to mix the they can make sterile peptides that you can inject um, I'm totally against uh, using it online so um, one of the interesting cases that started a while ago was um, I had an opportunity to sorry um, somehow when I get text that comes through my computer I can't control that but anyway um, uh, you want to make it uh, bigger full screen oh, yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, great. yeah perfect uh View. So this is a, a patient, 83-year-old with Alzheimer's that you've been working with. And uh, you, wait do you all see the results on this. It's it's amazing, um, the, the, the improvements she made with the peptides. But go ahead. Yeah, so um, I have her son living in Orlando, Florida. And he asked me, um, can I see his mother who's failing therapy um, and getting more depressed, anxiety, and just going down, um, just not getting healthier, even though seeing the best uh, gerontologist and neurologist uh, for her health. And here's a little video of her. I don't, hopefully you can see it. She speaks in Portuguese, she's from Brazil, but uh, this, this is a little video, whoops, uh, maybe it doesn't work here. Uh, let's see if I do this, if I hit this one here. <laughs> So let me make it into this new the slide uh, um, screenshot here. I think we could see it. We could see it well. Yeah. So um, somehow I couldn't do it with slides. So 
I saw her uh, end of December 2017, and she, I only had five days to see her. Uh, she was going to go back to Brazil. Her son said she's not coming back. You have five days to see if you can help her with her uh, basically depression and her uh, memory. Uh, so uh, she basically was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Uh, she was on antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications, and she was on the Menda. Uh, so the first day she saw me, we drew all her hormones, and it'd be by the time she would leave, I would get the results back. So I started her on basically an estradiol patch, um, progesterone, um, and also vitamin D. And all of those levels came back showing that she was low in D. Low, she had no estradiol, no progesterone. And I started her on cerebralicin, but we gave initially intravenously uh, for the first five days. So she got uh, basically five days or a week of IV uh, cerebral, cerebral lysin, and uh, also she got some other IV nutrition with her. And her family member was like really shocked that she was getting better. She was remembering things that she normally could not remember. She could not remember what she ate the night before. Uh, she would get confused. And uh, anyway, so her son would buy a three to six months supply of everything, go down to um, Brazil, and they would there were some healthcare providers or just uh, some nurses that basically uh, that lived with her and they basically made sure she took her progesterone, estradiol patch, her vitamin D, and they would do an IM injection of cerebral lysin uh, for her. And uh, anyway, this is like a year later, uh, a little over a year later, and she does a video, but she's trying to speak in English, like, thank you, Dr. Lee, but English is not her forte and it didn't come out well, but I mean, her family thanked me. They really got like two phenomenal years with her. And unfortunately, her son uh, had a, a lawsuit, divorce, lost everything and couldn't afford it. And um, when she couldn't get her um, supplementations uh, and hormone therapy and peptide therapy, uh, she eventually went downhill and passed. Uh, but they keep, they keep thanking me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for giving our mom back for two years. Uh, so... And she, at that time, when she, when you saw that video, she was depressed. She didn't want to hang out with any of her grandchildren. And here she's with her 10th grandchild and she's so happy. There's a little video of her, you know, singing and dancing. But uh, anyway, let's um, want to talk about uh, cerebral license, C-Max, C-Link, and uh, briefly about thymus and beta-4. So this is just a brief, brief out. I mean, I can go really deep on each one, but I just want to tell you that these are all peptides or nootropic agents. They can help enhance cognition, memory, facilitate learning. They can help the brain work better. So uh, what is cerebral lysin? This is a phenomenal peptide. It's one of my favorite peptides to use. I even get it myself, um, given to my mother, um, who's staying with us uh, for a couple months uh, during the wintertime. She lives in Pennsylvania, and I'm in Orlando, Florida. And my just my wife remembers every year exactly this is the 24th year that they're she's staying with us but anyway i'm not counting but my wife is so anyway it was this cerebral lysin was discovered by a, a professor in austria and uh, gerhard herrer and uh, cerebral lysin is a mixture of basically neuropeptides amino acids and i was using the original cerebral lysin but eventually the FDA basically prohibited it because they think it's a biologic, which I agree. Uh, but it, it comes from a young uh, pig's brain and it has all these substances to basically stimulate nerve cells uh, to grow. So unfortunately it's not approved in the US, but it is approved over 50 countries for the treatment of dementia and stroke. And uh, it's approved in Austria, China, Germany, Russia, South Korea, but uh, we are the last country. Um, and I don't know why, but anyway, there's a lot of clinical data. So cerebral lysin contains a lot of different things, but here are several um, growth factors. This glial cell line derived neurotrophic factor, nerve growth factor, ciliary neurotrophic factors. Um, and uh, there are a lot of studies, I'm just, doing one out of many studies. But um, last time I was in, well, when I presented in New York City, 
uh, there was a pediatrician that wanted to see if I was going to talk about kids, and I showed a, a beautiful study that they basically uh, used it in children uh, from, I think the study was like four months old to like a year and a half old. But anyway, this is a study of a meta-analysis of six randomized double-blind control studies. And when you use cerebral lysin, it, they don't talk about milligrams, it's they use milliliters because it comes like in a vial, it's, it's usually 10 ml vials. So you use like one vial, which is 10 mLs, you use two vials, which is 20 ml, 20 mLs, or three vials, which is 30 ml. So they gave a, a, a dose of 30 mLs IV daily. Um, they gave it like Monday through Friday and they got a whole month of it. So they, they received 20 IVs of 30 mLs of cerebral lysine during the first month. And in this meta-analysis, it shows that, um, by the way, the average age between 70 to 74, it significantly was more effective than placebo at four weeks and at six months regarding cognitive function. So um, there are other studies that show uh, if you're a relative with cerebral, with uh, Alzheimer's, or if you have APOE4, they've done studies with cerebral lysin with Aricept. Um, so there, there's other studies that basically looking as cerebral lysin, but there's also a study that looks at vascular, vascular dementia, which is also the second leading cause of uh, dementia. So they even, uh, cerebral lysin shows that it can help. So generally most studies uh, were using between 10 to 30 mLs uh, per day of IV five days a week. The concentration uh, per, the, it's 215 um, milligrams per mL, so comes in a 10 mL, ampule and optimal dosing is you infuse uh, 30 mls um, you put it with normal saline um, and um, or, and you basically infuse over um, one hour two or three times a week and uh, this should be normal saline not half normal saline it should be normal saline so i correct that and or you can give an injection one ml i am shot three to five times a week uh, and uh, I have a lot of people coming to my office who uh, basically are getting cerebral lysin injections uh, in our office. So um, how do you get cerebral lysin? Um, you got to be careful. There are several compound pharmacies that they say that they have it, but you want to get it from Austria. Uh, you want to get it from the real source. And uh, a lot of people who have used the real source and then eventually the FDA kind of shut it down, uh, and experiment with other compound pharmacies that they say it's cerebral lysin, they're not getting the same wow effect as um, the real stuff. So there's a, a doc, well, a healthcare provider who basically had a traumatic brain injury, his name's Larry, and he he's founded this Global Provider Alliance. And he does not profit on anything. He, there is a membership fee to pay off all their attorneys, to set this whole website up, it, it costs a lot of money for him. Uh, so it's just recouping it. He will eventually stop uh, in terms of membership once he hits a certain amount. It just, he doesn't want too many people in it, but it's still open. You can go to globalprovideralliance.org. You can contact Liz at liz at globalprovideralliance.org. They do have thymosin alpha one uh, sedaxin at 10 milligrams per vial. Uh, at $75. Uh, cerebral lysin is like you get uh, one box of five 10 am ampules. It's $135. Uh, the max you can order is three months at a time. There is an international physician consultation. You do have to send some records in. Uh, the doctor overseas will look at it. It's actually, there's a shipping fee and uh, there's a compound pharmacy in Thailand that gets the cerebral lysin from Austria. So it gets shipped from Thailand. And there is a $99 a month uh, membership fee. It's well worth it to get the real stuff. Um, and it's not easy to get cerebral license through Austria. So it, it just made it much easier. And, and I just want to mention that this, this is available in 50 countries now. This is not like a woo-woo new, new technology. This is people are out there using it. And imagine in your practice, how many cases of Alzheimer's do you have coming in? How much dementia is in your practice? This this actually increases BDNF, right. reduces Alzheimer's, even right. reduces, um, you know, uh, helps with stroke recovery, TBIs, mm -hmm. infants with TBIs. I mean, this is 
this is huge and it can be a very beneficial part of your practice, but we need it in the US too. So I put the petition uh, link in the chat below for those of you who are watching. Um, if you wanna just take a minute and sign the petition, we can hopefully get this available in the US so we don't have to go jump through hoops to get it through Thailand. I mean, this should be available widely in the US and it's not. So, um, you know, and there's different, you know, I won't get into the politics behind it, but I'm sure <laughs> there's reasons why it's not available in the US. And um, if we can uh, reverse Alzheimer's using peptides or, or at least greatly stop the progression of it, um, it, this is a great tool. I really did uh, remember I did talk a lot about um, brain derived neurotrophic factor, which is really you can measure that. And uh, BDNF is really, really important. It's the fertilizer for the brain. Mm -hmm. And everyone with Alzheimer's have very low BDNF. So vitamin D can optimize uh, brain derived neurotrophic factor. Cerebral lysine can bump it up. Other peptides can improve on increasing BDNF. And uh, that basically helps the brain uh, to grow and to get healthier. So um, there is uh, this Global Provider Alliance is using a loophole in the laws and it's for compassionate use because we're using it for there's no other therapy available. So this is really compassionate use. This is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But there is a one thing that um, I, I took out the slide um, but uh, I want to talk about microdosing, which is really interesting, because cerebral lysine comes in a like a, um, a dark am ampule has 10 mLs in it. So once you open up, you have to use all of it. But I use um, just uh, just uh, like one tenth of it. So um, and the reason is that uh, uh, I learned this through um, Larry, who set up uh, Global Provider Alliance. You can just use like um, instead of one. ML, you can use this like uh, just, um, I mean, you have, sorry, you have a box of, there's a 10 ML file. So you can use one ML and just inject um, an IM. And, um, and, and so I'm doing that twice a week, but I transfer, like when you open that up and I draw up one ML, when I inject the rest, you have nine ML. So what are you going to do? There's no cap on it. It's a glass lid. So you have to transfer it into a sterile, um, like an amber vial that you can get that's easily obtained and uh, basically so you can reuse it. Uh, so that's what we do. We don't, we don't um, dispense these vials to other people. We, we're not a pharmacy. So we just do that in our office and just basically inject. So this is what we do. I, you I encourage you, you should try um, an infusion of 10 ml uh, IV infusion, uh, mix it with normal saline over an hour. And for me, it felt like, um, Jody, it felt like a hamster running on the wheel and that wheel went much faster. And so I do one ML injection, I am twice a week and I'm loving it, so. Anyway. And so and so you've noticed differences in your cognition, even just with one millimeter, one milliliter, sorry, per, per twice a week, you've noticed big, big yeah, changes, I started with once memory, a week. things like I, that. I thought once a week was uh, fine, but uh, anyway, I'm, I'm publishing a lot of papers. I mean, I'm like, uh, I have uh, two that just got one. Well, it, it was sent way before. It's called Aging. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a peer review. And uh, anyway, it's uh, on senolytic therapy. And it's a two-year study, huge. Like I'm the lead author, but the funny thing, I was the last one to find out that it could finally got published. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so the other one is, uh, no one tells me anything. And the other one <laughs> got published was, uh, comprehensive review of thymus and alpha-1 in uh, human clinical trials uh, to show the FDA that thymus and alpha-1 is absolutely safe. Um, I tabulated over 11,000 patients in human clinical trials that have been on this peptide and no side effects. It's absolutely safe because they were concerned about safety. So cerebral lysine is also safe. Uh, there are studies that even they're saying at the very end, it was absolutely safe and uh, no side effects. So cerebral lysine, yeah, you could get side effects, but overall, it's been shown to be safe. And this is naturally derived too, right? It's not- yeah, it's, a, it's a brain derived from a pig. So technically, right. it's a biologic. And that's why the FDA is really sticky about this, because it's not a pure peptide. Okay. It, it's a biologic. So they're, they really, they don't, they're, they, they really drew the line on this biologic. So I agree with this. It, it's a biologic. So. 
not a okay. type. But uh, let, let's move on to uh, the second one is called CMAX and uh, SEMAX. Um, this is a peptide that is a seven amino acid peptide. Um, and it's an analog of ACTH and uh, ACTH, as you know, so it's released from the pituitary gland to stimulate uh, basically your adrenal glands to make a cortisol. Uh, so ACTH is, um, it is a peptide um, and uh, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a hormone. I think it's bigger than 40 amino acids, so it's technically not a peptide. But anyway, it's a hormone that's released from the uh, pituitary gland. And part of it is uh, basically alpha MSH. A lot of peptides uh, are derived from the alpha melanocyte stimulating hormones. So um, anyway, CMAX is one of them. And uh, so that's um, CMAX has uh, was actually um, discovered in, in Russia. And uh, Unfortunately, um, Dr. Cavison, who uh, is my favorite uh, uh, professor and scientist, he recently passed away. Um, so he's well known for epithalon. Uh, but uh, this is the seven amino acid, has no hormonal activity. So how does it work? Um, you can see on this graph here in rats, it basically improves on increasing BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Um, and also it can increase the receptor site, uh, the tyrosine kinase B receptor where um, that can help BDNF uh, basically get activated. So anyway, um, so there's data that shows that it increases brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Um, here is a stroke study, 30 patients with an acute ischemic stroke, uh, improves in the recovery of stroke clinically and by EEG. They gave 12 milligrams for moderate stroke, 18 milligrams for severe stroke, and only five to 10 days. So this is 1997. So think about that. The Russians were way ahead of us. It's neuroprotective. It can protect neurons from glutamate toxicity, anti-inflammatory, and uh, improves neuronal survival by an average of 30%. Uh, so the bottom line with CMAX, you can't swallow it. Uh, it has to be sub-Q or intranasal. I've never done sub-Q, just intranasal. You have to keep it refrigerated. It does have a short half-life. So once you start it, um, it, the potency goes down. So it doesn't have a long shelf life. And I recommend you use 750 micrograms per nasal spray in each nostril once a day, total dose of uh, 1.5 milligrams a day. Um, so anyway, that's CMAX. And for a lot of people, um, for myself, I had to study for the boards uh, every 10 years. And uh, I just remember using CMAX just like a week before. And I was able to sit down for like 10 hours and just concentrate and just uh, go through all the Q&As and just to focus better. So Oh my gosh. Uh, has this been studied at all with people with attention deficit disorder or anything like that? Or these nootropes? A lot of studies are in Russian. I don't think in Russia they have ADD or ADHD. Okay, or at least they don't admit to. It's an, it's an American. <laughs> yes. right. Anyway, um, the thing is that, uh, yeah, I, I don't have, I, I do have, yes, uh, parents with children with ADD and ADHD, but we've never really used that. Usually they talk about their daughter with acne, you know, you have a peptide. <laughs> anyway, um, CMAX is, the problem is that I, I try to encourage my us. Uh, my, my kids are now in college, uh, but when they were younger, one of my sons was having problems with uh, focus and uh, I was trying to demonstrate how to use it. So I took it out of the refrigerator and I shook it up and I did the spray, but I forgot that you're going to get like a brain freeze. And I went, oh, and then they looked at me and they go, daddy, we don't do drugs. So they ran away. And I could never do that. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I think he could have benefit from it, but uh since I'm his dad, he doesn't listen to me 99% of the time anyway. Right. Uh, if you can fix, if you can find a solution to that. I was going to say, can you find a peptide for that? <laughs> yeah, you got to shrink them down to five years old. <laughs> then right. So the next one you know, is called C-Lank. It's, it sounds like C-Max, but it's, it doesn't help uh, with focus. Uh, C-Lank is actually also discovered in Russia, also a seven amino acid, but doesn't come from ACTH. It actually part of like this, uh, the FC uh, domain of IgG. So part of your immunoglobulin. So it's a different part. 
Uh, and it's really important for anxiety. And I do have people with bad anxiety and they, they just, it's a nasal spray. Uh, and it, it reduces your anxiety without any sedative properties. So it's, they did a study of 62 patients and uh, with generalized anxiety disorder and basically helped them. So how does it work? It actually turns on three or sorry, 22 genes that's uh, involved with the GABA production. So uh, whether it's a transfer of GABA or GABA receptors basically works on uh, basically gene expression. So it's really an epigenetic effect. It turns on the gene to basically help the GABA receptors work better and, and the GABA system to work better. So again, c lank is very similar to uh, C-Max. You can't swallow it, it has to be sub-Q intranasal. And um, it seven dose is a little different, but it's a nasal spray, one to two sprays um, per dose with two or three doses per day. Uh, so anyway, it's I have some people who really like it. It's a short half-life. And uh, so it's hard to get C-Max, c, -Max, c -Lank. A lot of compound pharmacies are trying to maximize their, I guess, investment. So they're going for GLP ones and the, the ones that are not selling a lot, they're kind of eliminated, but you can still get this from Brooksville, uh, which is uh, both C-Max and C-Link, uh, which is in Tampa, not in Tampa, but close to Tampa. And it's a town called Brooksville. It's a very small town. I've, I've driven through uh, Brooksville and uh, one, one of my friends who has a compound pharmacy, his name's Terry, he goes, why would you come to Brooksville? Uh, anyway, so it, it has like three traffic lights and then that's maybe four traffic lights. So uh, the next peptide, uh, love thymosin beta-4, TB4. Uh, this is a peptide that just this afternoon I injected someone's knee with, with also BPC-157 great in terms of reducing inflammation and healing, uh, but TB4 can help the brain um, and uh, also help with, if you just can remember one thing, myelination, it turns on these cells called oligo oligodendrocytes that basically uh, basically um, wrap like myelin around the nerve uh, axon. So it helps with myelination. So it promotes um, myelination, not only in the brain, but in the peripheral uh, nervous system. Um, and it, TB4 does a lot. I mean, I, I, I could think I could spend almost an hour just talking about TB4, but this is just a quick summary. So it comes in a 3,000 uh, uh, micrograms per ml or so 3 milligrams per ml, usually a 5 ml vial. You can get a sub Q or IV push. Uh, for, oh, I spelled four wrong correctly. So two typos I've done this. It's amazing. Maybe you need more of these peptides. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, 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 it's like I'm terrible in spelling, but uh, no, the only joking. way I can catch it is when I'm presented. So, okay. <laughs> so um, fro, for acute injury, um, you can use like 1.5 milligrams um, to uh, one uh, ml, which is three milligrams, uh, and give an IV push or sub Q. Uh, twice a day for three to five days. So I, I've injured myself so many times. Uh, I slipped on ice and popped my hamstring near my knee and also in my buttocks. And uh, I got a lot of TB4 and BPC and it really helps with inj injury recovery. So if you have someone going for surgery and they want to recover faster, you can consider using thymus and beta-4 um, and inject near the surgical site, but it doesn't have to be at the surgical site, but close around it. So if you have shoulder surgery, you can inject like right up in the upper arm there or knee surgery, you can inject in the thigh and they will recover. And uh, FYI, um, you know, for those that are kind of stable, you can cut it back. Uh, so, and they still have a little discomfort, but you can just cut it back. So, because it, it gets expensive, you use a lot of this. But uh, you can cut it back to like a quarter cc or 25 units on the insulin syringe, which is 750 micrograms. And you could do it either every other day or daily for 20, 30 days, and people do recover. Uh, so anyway, people with, uh, let's say your uh, TBI, it's not an acute phase, but it's happened a year ago, you can use uh, uh, this to help the brain, hopefully, remyelinate itself at the, at the lower dose. 
I so mean, this is for T TBIs and um and like strokes, any kind of brain injury you're talking about with an acute injury, not not musculoskeletal or anything like that. Yeah, you can use for both. For both, okay. You had said, but yeah. Yeah, it's better if you do IV. It'll probably get to the brain faster. But anyway, um, okay. Anyway, Sub Q if you if you can't do it. So. Here in Boston, we have we had TB twelve for many years, <laughs> not TB four. <laughs> A little different. Oh, um, is it Tom Brady? Yeah, <laughs> he's uh, he's got this whole no, I, system. I've heard that he uses <laughs> a lot of peptides. So, yeah. so I actually I say this is um, Tom Brady's peptides, <laughs> but yeah, but oh, uh, using yeah. some of this stuff, right? I heard it's a right. Anyway, um, so uh, conclusion of these neurotropic agents, these peptides, um, cerebral lysine increases uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, but also stimulates uh, your um, stem cells in the brain. So it, it can hopefully grow new neurons. Um, and then CMAX increases uh, BDNF. Um, C-LANC also increases BDNF, but also expression of GABA to help you calm you down. TB4 does a lot, but myelination is like, you know, the key point there. So, um, we're losing peptides since September of 2023. The FDA on a Friday night around 6 p.m. posted on their website 22 peptides that are going to be banned. It's not officially banned, it's in the process. And uh, I formed a non-for-profit organization many years ago because I saw this coming. And it's really painful to get signatures. And uh, But the good news, a year ago, I was at 1,400 signatures um, because I had a person, uh, Dr. Greg Jones, present about a year ago, and I looked back and I had his slide deck, and I said, "Please sign the petition." That was a year ago, 1,400. Now I'm at 6,400, so up 5,000. I thought, honestly, when when September hit, I could easily get 10,000, but uh, anyway, it's not easy because I don't. I'm not on social media. Please don't ask me to be on Facebook. I don't know how to use it. I, I just don't get the concept. I'm, I'm too Well, old. you're on Facebook now, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't even know how to do it. So. <laughs> it's like, uh, what wall are you talking about? So anyway, so- Do you uh, want to put the petition. QR code? Yeah, there it is. There's a QR code. And I have my patients sign it, have your friends and family sign it. Um, and as of just like today, we have about 60, almost 6,500 signatures. We need more. Um, much more. So anyway, more the better because uh, um, we can save peptides like in different states, like Florida has Governor DeSantis and there is a Surgeon General, uh, Dr. Joseph Latipo, and his wife loves peptides, but he wants to help us out. But he goes, you don't, you don't have many signatures. And I'm thinking he needs at least, uh, um, personally, I, he never told me the number, but at least 30,000 to start off and maybe, you know, easily 100,000. But um, you know, we had to start somewhere. So this is a grassroots movement and uh, social media can basically do this. So uh, thank you, Jody, for just sharing this uh, petition and have all your friends and patients sign it. And you can make a picture of this QR code and just post it on your, you know, if you're a doctor, just at the checkout center, say, please sign the petition and, uh, and just to save peptides. And that, uh, that's a great idea. And yeah. um, I will share this on my YouTube as well. And uh, and if those of you more interested in finding out about peptides, um, Dr. Lee's book is excellent. So I will link that below as well, if any of you are interested in purchasing that uh, to get more detail on these peptides. Um, do you want to unshare? So uh, so thank you so much for, thank you, there we go. Thank you so much for coming on today. Um, any parting words, anything else that you'd like to add or just besides please sign the petition, but anything else um, that you see yeah. coming in the future along these well, lines? Well, actually we're teaching, uh, if you're interested, um, March 16th, um, 2024 in Orlando. It's a live class. It's not going to be Zoom. Um, but uh, uh, we do have room for people interested in learning um, peptides. I'm going to teach about, um, I think it'll be, we said seven, but I think it may be nine new peptides out there plus small molecules. So we will give you options just in case some of these peptides are gone and there, there's alternatives. So there are, are many alternatives. Um, some are not made yet, some are in theory, but uh, some are already out. So I'm really excited. 
because this is evolving science. And uh, anyway, it's something that we're trying to use something that's natural to help the body heal and everybody needs it. So I'm doing this. My wife goes, why are you doing wasting all your time? It, it's not just for me and for my patients. It's for everyone to benefit from. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. And I know so many of us are interested in <clears throat> extending our lifespan and staying as young as we can, as long as we can. And um, this can be a great tool in your toolbox to help your patients. So um, so thank you so much again for coming on. I really appreciate it. It was such such an honor to meet you at the conference and uh, good luck in continuing uh, your research and your work with these because I think it's really cutting edge and I'm so glad you were able to come into our group today. Thank you very much, Jody. Have a great day. All right, take care. Bye-bye.